to model the turbine plane, the first step is going to be importing the scan data so we can begin the model. Selecting the STO file and using the import only option. The scan data here is already aligned, so our first step is going to be region group the entire the entire section so that we can be able to pick planes and curves off of it. From here, the next steps we're going to be using the mesh sketch tool to pull off the sketches that we'll use to extrude, loft, and move faces to complete the model. As you can see, the region group allows us to find whether sections of the scan data are planes, cylinders, or revolves. Using the mesh sketch tool and finding a true plane, we're able to take the cross section of the root of the turbine blade over to the left so that we can get an accurate representation of the blade. Hiding our mesh and our reference planes, we're able to see the pink outline, which would be the outline of the scan data that we're going to use as our reference to sketch the root. While using the center point arc, highlighting the selected areas in pink will give an approximation of the curvature that we're supposed to be using. Double clicking, right clicking, or checking the check mark will accept that. Here we're able to use either the circle or the center point arc, again auto selecting onto the pink lines giving us a quick rough sketch of what the parts would look like. The next step will be adding constraints uh, to the lines so that they are tangent at the ends and then afterwards making sure that there are no disjointed edge edges in the entire body. The yellow concentric box will pop up when you know that your two edge points are finally connected together, therefore not leaving any gaps, which will cause problems later on when you're going to extrude your sketch. You can use the tangent lines and constraints for everything including your straight lines connected to your curves, your curves connected to other curves, and even your straight lines connected to your splines. This will be seen later on when we're creating the curve section of the turbine plate itself. Finally, using the dotted pink line or the straight pink line uh, to create our straight lines, we're able to use the corner tool to auto snap in our corners so that we don't have to try to drag and make precise pinpoints. This way will be quicker and easier. This can be done on any two line sections that will eventually intersect each other. Finally, to completing the, the route, you can either use the chamfer tool when you are in your solid body or you're able to manually sketch in your chamfers here. After sketching them in and using the power trim tool to cut away any excess sketch lines, you'll finally be done and ready to extrude the body. Clicking the disjointed sections will make sure that you do not have any green dots, otherwise known as disjointed ends, that will disallow you to, to extrude the final sketch. Turning the mesh sketch and the region groups back on, we're able to extrude out to a region group. Extruding out to a region group will allow us to extrude to a p pick a point on the mesh and either take the minimum, the maximum, or the mean distance to that area. 
Doing that for both sides will give us an accurate distance for how long the root should be. After this model is completed, the next section is going to be you taking three separate planes to create the sketch on for each section of the turbine blade itself. This section will actually be lofted together to create the correct curvature of the entire blade. Using the front plane, holding the control button, and dragging the plane up to the desired height, we're able to quickly use shortcuts to create the planes that we need. Using this method, duplicate two more times to create the middle and the lower section of the blade. With the three sketches complete, we can show all three of them. Once we zoom out, we'll be able to use the loft tool up at the top which works close to the feet with the extrude tool except for taking a one stretch out in one direction and you can go from one sketch to the next to the next for an infinite number of sketches. This is good for complicated surfaces or surfaces that aren't quite straight. As you can see here we have the blade and the solid body which stays at a very close accuracy. The next sec step that we want to do is we can use the move face tool which will take the, the face that you have and move it in the direction that you choose. For the first one, we're going to move the top face of the turbine blade in the direction that the plane that it's on. This will allow us to have a consistent and smooth surface going all the way up to the top. You can manually drag the blue arrow or use the number pad to, to get in a specific, time, a specific number. You're also able to auto snap to the region groups as I had just done. Finally, for the bottom surface, we'll take the bottom part of the, our loft and drag direction all the way down into the, the root of the turbine blade. This will allow us to merge two pieces of solid, solid bodies together, therefore allowing us to put a fillet around the base of the turbine blade, much like you see in the scan data. The Boolean merge here will allow us to have one solid body, which will be named the named loft one as you see in the model tree to the left. Selecting this, the edge that we would like to use for the fillet and then using the magic wand tool which will automatically calculate the best, the most accurate feature curve. Uh, selecting check, you will see we get a nice accurate fillet all the way around. A very smooth, consistent surface which is without any sharp edges. So using these simple methods, we were able to model the entire turbine blade without any, without any complications. These are the exact same ones that will be used at a later date.